Okay. So has anybody here been in any of the book reviews before? The first time. The first time you can see. Has anybody what was your first time? Okay. I welcome. So we are basically done with chapter one of this book. We did, we we have a a calendar we do Mondays and Wednesdays for and we will do Monday, Wednesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. So we've gone through chapter one of this book. Um a very, very nice review of chapter one, actually. So currently we are working on chapter two of this book. So chapter two at least um we are hoping to finish chapter two and jump into chapter three. All right. So, <clears throat> so in this chapter, we will start to do things that we act we can that can actually be called programming. So chapter one was actually just introduction to JavaScript, history of computers, and the rest. Chapter two is going to deal more with um, programming, right? So we expand our command of JavaScript language beyond the nouns and sentence fragments we've seen so far. So, yeah, so that's what basically we are going to be expanding our view of JavaScript, right, in this book. Okay. So, um, so yes, if anybody has, was in chapter one's class, we remember that we talked about, um, talked a lot about the um, um, history of computers. We also talked about, um, talked about memory, talked about, did a lot of stuff actually, right? Yeah. So, we're going to continue with that now. Okay, so yes, um, in chapter one, we made values and applied operators to them to get new values, right? So, um, example of that is something like this. We made a value. A value is something like, I say let, let x is equals to five, is a value, right? And it stores x to be five. We can say um, um, x plus 10, right? So when we do something like this, when, when, I, when I console the log, let's say let y, So what might tell me what I can what I will get when I consider log y? How am I going to get fifteen? Yeah, so this this basic this basic uh, knowledge, right? I expect everybody to know this. When we consider log y, we're going to get fifteen. Perfect. Okay, so now we also talked about um operators that are in something like this now. We can just like so log plus plus x. So when we do that, what are we going to get on our console? Because log this, what, what should I get? Hmm? Who tell me? No, no, look at look at look at it very well. X is five and plus plus x. If I, if I console log this, what do I get? Five. Mm. So which is it? Is it five or six? Five? Six. Okay. Let's check. We get six. Oh wow. Nice. So what if I do this? Um this what am I gonna get? Six. Are you sure? Six. Okay. Let me check. I get five. Oh, crazy. JavaScript is crazy. I get five. <laughs> How do I get five? Why I got five? Okay. Does anybody know why I got five? Eh? Nobody knows why I got five. Then? Eh? 
I can't hear you guys. Can you hear me? So why did I get five? I got five. Like, why? Nobody knows why I got five. Please, this class is very, very interactive, please. Um, I would be asking people to answer questions, right? So the reason why we're doing this is so that you can actually interact with the class. So if you're in the class and you're not saying you're on mute, you're trying to not say anything, I'll personally kick you out of this class because I don't like people being in my class and being very mute. So I'll personally kick you out. If I call your name and you don't understand me, I'll kick you out. Thank you for understanding. Yeah. So why am I getting five? Can anybody answer? Oh, Victor, can you, can you unmute and tell me why I'm getting five? Hello, Victor, are you there? I don't think you're here, so sorry. Um, blessing, I need, I need any pen. Are you there? Are you there? Blessing, I didn't pray. Are you there? Okay, so why why do you think I'm getting five? Why why am I getting five when I console log X plus plus? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? Okay, no problem. All right. Um, root. Welcome to class. I want to ask a question. I console, I did x equals to five, and I did x plus plus, and I'm getting five. Do you know why I'm getting five? Do you have an idea why it's giving me five? Okay. But it's just one iteration now. It's not there are not two iterations. It's just one time I'm increasing the number by one. Okay. So what happens is that this x plus plus is the post increment operator. What that means is is going to increment after it is done with whatever this is so whenever i'm done with this console login right it's going to so if i console log x at this point now console log x here you will see that i'm going to get i'm going to get six right good evening so this is a post increment operator. That's why I'm getting five here because it's going to only console log x and then it's going to increase it. And then when I check what value of x here, I'm getting six. But if I <clears throat> if I had a pre increment, right? This is basic JavaScript for simple, simple JavaScript things that you know, I console log. I'm going to get I'm going to get six automatically because this is a pre-increment. It means that increase the value before console logging it. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. So so yeah. So I've been able, in this in this short while I've been able to pass more knowledge. So even if you are going to go with this small one, at least you should know the difference between pre-increment and post-increment. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, does anybody have a question about this, or is it clear? What's the question? Five? Five equals to plus. Let's... Five equals to plus. Sorry. Equals to plus. I just. 
Chelsea goes to close. <laughs> you mean Chelsea goes to? Okay, so you want to? Okay, okay. What I mean is, okay. Uh, let's uh, x plus equal to let's say six. Let me let me console log on so that you can see what that means. When I console log, I get eleven. What this means is, eh, I get the value of x. And I say x is equals to x plus six. That's what this means. It means replace the value of x with x plus six. That's what this means. That, why am I in foul? Are you are you wearing chicken? <laughs> I said loud, loud, loud. See that clearly this night. Okay, so yes, what that's what it means. It means that we place the value of x, right? With x plus six. And x is already five. So x plus six will be eleven. So the value of x will now be eleven. So when when I consider log um x, I'm about to get eleven. It's different from from doing x plus plus. What this means is add one to x, but add one to x after this, like after you're done with everything you need to do, then increase x by one. This one is different, you know. By this one, this one means increase x by one before you do anything else. That's what you are trying to say, computer. So these are the basics building blocks of coding. You guys are missed chapter one there are a lot of things we discussed in chapter one so i don't know how you guys are going to get it we talked about um this um null uh, knowledge, uh, this logical short circuiting we did a lot about it actually we went in depth into it automatic type conversion um they will open my bank room. i have money now eh. yeah <laughs> i'm glad i'll talk to you later <laughs> okay so yes um so we talked about um um on equal operators, we talk about comparing alphabets. You know which alphabet is big. Okay, let me let me ask you guys. Um, if I consider log, and I say, um, letter A, is it bigger than um capital letter A? I'm like, is it true or false? What do you think this will give me? True or false? We're comparing them together. What, what, if, I, if I consider log A and A, true. Hmm. Depends on what. <laughs> yeah, I actually explained this in the last class, so sorry for, for your loss. So it's true actually it's true the reason is because of their unicode character in the last class i didn't record it actually i didn't record it because the background was quite noisy so a is bigger than capital a because of i explained that i'm not going to do this more small um, revision right um if you check um unicode character unicode character table you will see a table right that um, explains which character is bigger and which character is smaller on the Unicode table. Okay. So if you notice now, um, uh, this table, let's see. A comes before, uh, okay, let's do it. Capital A comes before um, small A. I don't think this table is the best to use. Let me look for another table. The better table that I found. Uh, okay. Let me use this one. Okay, so if you look at this table now, right, you will see something. You will see that um, there is this, uh, there are letter A, capital A has a value of 65. In its, like if you convert the Unicode to decimal, it has a value of 65, right? And then, um, um, uh, small a has a value of um, 
97. So capital A is smaller than small letter A. So basically what we say that when you when you describe when you write a, a, a string like let's say you describe I say um oh, let's do something like this now. Let's let x is equals to I am a boy. JavaScript does not just see this string as what it is. It, it converts everything to Unicode character. So if I do console.log x dot charcoal that charcoal that um, I'm gonna see thing zero. I'm gonna do let me play this. I get this 105, right? So JavaScript sees this and then it converts this thing to charcoal that 105. Then it's charcoal that um, index of one, right? And I play it. Uh, I get 32, which is empty space. So now let's see charcoal, charcoal that index of uh, two. This is zero in this I will get 65. Oh, 97 sorry 97 let's confirm 97 is the character of small letter a let's replace this with after a we see that i'm going to get 65 uh okay let me save this sorry this one to replace sorry is here uh let me play it i should get 65 now yeah so can you see the last script represents characters with numbers and the numbers are unicode characters so whenever the sees a small letter e it automatically transform transforms it to 97 and so now when you're comparing values together the value the value at small letter a right is bigger than the value at capital letter a so that's why i'm going to get through does anybody understand I can't hear you again. It's clear, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, please, guys, if you don't understand, you can easily just drag me back. So, we talked about Boolean values. We did a lot of stuff, actually, last class. I know some people missed it. Sorry for your loss. <laughs> eh? No, you actually, made, you actually made a few bad though, because we went to, when they, like, the... I explained a lot of things, right? When deep into things, especially like this last part. So this scenario. Is, uh, that is sorry for your loss now. <laughs> you feel bad after it's actually a lot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> Next time, don't sleep. <laughs> okay, let's move now. Okay, so we made values and, and applied operators to to them to get new values creating values like this is the main sub substance of any javascript program but that substance has to be framed in a large structure to be useful so that's what we'll cover next a fragment of code that produces a value is called an expression so every value that is written literally so that's 22 or psychoanalysis is an expression so let's say um, this is an expression. So any value I written literally is an expression. Any expression between parentheses is also an expression. If a binary operator applies two expressions on a unary operator, so if 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 um, Karen, what's it? As a, uh, okay, an expression between two parentheses and expression as in a binary operator applied to two expressions or a unary operator applied to one. So, what this is saying is that um, binary repeater is something like, let's say, x is equals to, let's say, 3 plus 5. It's a binary repeater. Okay, you can tell me, what is a binary repeater? If you, if you get it in the last class, what is a binary repeater? What is a binary repeater? Binary, what is it? When you say something is binary, what does it mean? You see? Zero and one. 
Thank you, Williams. To cool, guy. Three values. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, so yeah, an expression between parentheses was an expression as in the binary operator applied onto expressions or unary operator applied to one. This shows part of the beauty of language-based interface. Expressions can contain other expressions in a similar way to how sub subsequences in human languages are nested. A subsequence can contain its own subsequence, and so on. This allows us to build expressions that describe arbitrarily complex computations. If an expression corresponds to a sentence fragment, a JavaScript statement corresponds to a full sentence. A program is a list of, of statements. The simplest kind of statement is an expression. So JavaScript is a program language, and a program language is a list of statements. And then the simplest kind of statement is an expression. The reason why this guy is explaining these things is because it's very, very important to understand, you know, what you're talking about, right? So the simplest kind of statement is an expression with a semicolon after it. So this is one. So this is an expression. So this is this is a statement. A statement is in Java in, in English now when you when you're making a statement, you're done when you add a full stop on the end, right? If I say welcome home. And I put full stop it. That's the statement, right? English exactly. In JavaScript, when you're done with the statement, you put the semicolon at the end. So I say let x is equal to three. And I put the semicolon at the end. That's the statement. Times um is a full like command. So what that means is whatever x was before, I want you to put three into that x position. So that's the statement. You made a statement. So, it is it is it is a useless program though. An expression can that uh, an expression can be content or just produce a value, which can be used by by enclosing by the enclosing code. A statement stands on its own, so it amounts to something only if it affects the world. So, um, it could display something on the screen, accounts as changing as changing the world. Or it could change the internal state of the machine in a way that it will affect the statements that come after it. These changes are called side effects. Um, I'm going to talk about side effects later. Side effects, I'm going to talk about side effects later. The statement in the previous example just produces the value 1 and true, and then immediately throws them away. So, what is your bed? What is your bed? Okay. Uh, so yes, um, the um, the statement in the previous example just produces values one and three and true. I mean, this guy, this this is one, and this is true. And then when he's done with it, he throws it away. What that means is, if you if you look at programming languages, you will remember that um, um, every every computer has memory locations, right? So when it is done with a particular computation. He's not, he doesn't store the output, he throws it away so that others can use the same memory location. So that's why that's why it means that I said, um, um, the value one and true, and then immediately throws them away. This leaves no impression on the value on the world at all. When you run this program, nothing observable happens. In some cases, JavaScript allows you to omit semicolon at the end of the statement, in other cases, it has to be there, or the next line will be treated as part of the same statement. Something like this. Uh, if I say let's s equals five, and I do like um, um, y is equals to ten. JavaScript will not allow you to see. You know, automatically my my VS code automatically puts a semicolon at the end, right? Let me just move this and do this. Do this. So yeah, it's going to break actually. It's going to shut on my head. What am I, what am I trying to do? So sometimes semicolon is very important because it tells JavaScript that whatever you're doing before, right, has ended. But some sometimes you can you're allowed to not you you can be free to use it, right? Yeah. So in some cases JavaScript allows you to omit the semicolon at the end of a statement. In other cases it has to be there or in the next line 
unless I'm treated as part of the same treatment, the, the rules for when it can be safely omitted are somewhat complex and error prone. So in this book, every statement that needs semicolon will always get one. I recommend you to do the same, at least until you've learned more about the sub subtleties, subtleties of missing semicolons. So we're going to talk about bindings. So bindings, bindings are just basically um, variables, right? How do how does the program keep an internal state? So this is a very very good question. How does a program keep an internal state? Does anybody here do React? Anybody here? Does anybody here do React? React, like what could React JS at all? Have you heard of state before? State management. Have you heard of that word before? So, what does state management? What do, what do you think? It, what, what does it mean to you? What do you think it means? Anybody? Particular behavior. Hmm. Anybody else? Hmm. For you, is what? Okay. Any person? Okay. Okay. So, um, actually, um, all of you tried, uh, but I'm not going to give anybody the answer because actually, nobody, none of you, none of you actually got it. State management, right? Um, what it means is. Um, information that belongs to a particular component in Java, in React, actually. So it's like saying um, everybody has a name, right? Everybody has a name that's unique to them. So your name is your, let's say your name is your state, your name, your age, information that belongs to you personally is your current state, right? So all those information, your NIN, your BVN, your, you know, your age, the school you went to, this information is, is, is um is is unique to you so it's information that belongs to a particular component right and then the information can actually change right you are staying in nigeria today tomorrow you can move to uk tomorrow you can move to canada tomorrow you can move to jamaica whatever so your state can change right your information can change exactly the same thing with components in react information can always be changed so um when you talk about state, state means data that is personal or state information that is um, that is attached to a single component or that belongs to a component. So yeah, now, the same thing with this now. Um, in in JavaScript, normal JavaScript, we use bindings as a way to manage state. So how does a program keep an internal state? How does it say How does it remember things? When when you say something, you remember something. It means that there's an information. Right? For me to remember something, it means that there was something to remember. And what am I remembering? I'm remembering information, Abby. Right? Are you guys following me? So you can always you can if there's nothing to remember, then you cannot remember anything. But if there's something to remember, I mean somebody what I remember information. So we have seen how to produce new values from old values. But how does but this does not change the old values? And new values have to be immediately used or it will be dissipated again. To catch and hold values, JavaScript provides a thing called bindings or variables. That means for us to store values, JavaScript provides a thing called variables or bindings. So now like this now, this computation now, 5 times 5, stored in a variable called cut. So whenever you want to access cut, Whenever you have any need to access cut, just come and console your log cut. I ask you to tell you that a hey, cut is, you know, the result of whatever happened there. And you tell you the result is um 25. Is this clear?
Okay. Um, that is second kind of statement, right? The special word let indicates that this sentence is going to define a binding. It is followed by the name of the binding, and if we want to immediately give it a value, you know, by an equal to operator or an expression, the previous statement creates a binding cut called cut and uses it to grab hold of the number that it produces by multiplying five times five. Okay. Okay, so yes. Yeah. Okay, so yes, the previous statement creates a binding called cut and grabs it and uses the value hold of the number as produced by multiplying five and five. Um so after binding, okay. after binding has been defined, its name can be used as an expression. The value of such an expression is, is the value the binding currently holds. Here's an example. So we did let 10 is equals to 10. And we can do 10 times 10. So the binding, right? The binding, which is 10, right? Um... Uh, the, the, uh, uh, um, so the binding holds the value of 10 now so whenever you want to you can instead of using, writing 10 yeah, you can easily multiply the value of this 10 the value of this 10 is this clear? does it make sense? I'm sure this should be very very clear so when the binding points to a value that does not mean that it is tied to that value forever okay so when the binding points the value doesn't mean that so um now we can say this cut now right it's five times five but in javascript you can also come and say cut plus to 11. right so what's what when i consider a lot cut what will i get is it why why and look at this me why what okay so let me let me let me paint an analogy to you guys now first of all in javascript's mind let's say there's a bucket right inside that bucket i put five times five right and then i come to like one six and i said whatever was inside i empty the bucket and i put a new value inside the bucket right so this is called overriding right you know what overriding means Variety means replacing what was already there with something totally different. So I've overridden the value of cut with a new value. This is very important to understand because this is basically what we do in JavaScript. Overriding things, right? Changing values, overriding them. So now the new value is now 11. All right. So I can actually override it and put something else. I can put a string. I can say, welcome. Goodbye. Eh? Okay, we use const. Yeah, let's try. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I can't change it. <laughs> I would let, let me let me do this okay so that maybe as a const cut is so I can do cut uh, as equals to hmm? Let's go Yes. No, it's okay, come whiskey tonight. Okay, <laughs> sorry guys. Yeah. <laughs> so now, yeah, you see, I've replaced the value of cut with a new value, right? So, um, 
Yes, it is exactly the same thing. So, um, 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 so one thing that you cannot do with these guys is that you cannot come and say, if I let here now, there's going to be an error. You cannot really clear block scope. So, yeah, this is going to be an issue. Even if we use as a const. It cannot really, cannot really clear block scope, blah, 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 blah. And it's yeah, so this is the issue with it. But normally, we can see we, we can just empty the value of cut and put something else. So now, um, when the binding points to a value, that does not mean that it's tied to that value forever. The equals operator can be used at any time on existing bindings to disconnect them from the current value and have them point to a new value. So we had let mode is equal to light. Also log mode light. And I can say mode is equal to dark. Also log mode, I get dark. So you should imagine bindings as tentacles. So this is one, one thing that imagine them as tentacles, right? I use bucket illustration, but you can use tentacles, right? Rather than boxes. Yeah. So they do not contain values, they grasp them. Two bindings can refer to the same value. A program can assess this the values that a program can as, can assess only the values that it is still that it still has reference to. When you need to remember something, you you grow a tentacle and to hold on to it, or you reattach one of the tentacle tentacles to it. Let's look at another example. Right. To remember the number of dollars that Luigi still owes you, you create a binding and then when he pays back thirty five dollars, you give the you give that find a new value so let's Luigi depth is equal to 140 dollars Luigi depth is now 140 dollars uh, minus 35 so when I console log Luigi depth I get that Luigi depth has turned to 105 so what that means is that I stored the variable Luigi depth 140 dollars inside the variable right and then I'm subtracting 35 from it 35 dollars when I when I console log the result I'm getting 105 dollars it means that I've replaced Luigi's depth Right with Luigi's depth minus 35. So is there a way I can I can clean write this code to be cleaner? I just showed you guys something like this, but I want someone to help me to clean this. Make it shorter. Yeah, let's go. Maybe I can shorten this code. This is a addition expression. This is basic mathematics. So please, we are we are all of us are talking about React here now. We cannot just some people cannot <laughs> do basic arithmetic. Please let's 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 stop playing. Uh, let's go. I want to shorten this code. I want to make this code cleaner. There are just two lines, right? The first line and the second line. I want to just clean it up. So as I let out before. So basically what I'm doing is is this is minus equal to that what I want to be one. So when I when I when I play it, like I'm still going to get a hundred and um, five. Yeah. So that's basically it. So yes, it's not most of the time when, when I ask you guys a question, it's basically something simple, right? Just to test you guys, check you know as if I want you guys to think too much. Something simple. So when you define a binding without giving it a value, the tentacle has nothing to grasp. So it ends up in thin air. If you ask for the value of an empty binding, you will get undefined. Example. Uh, let's do this now. Let's do this. Let's say let's do the depth. So this is this is a, 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 a value that does not have a binding that does not have a value, right? So when I console or log. I console log um Luigi depth. Sorry. Okay. 
Mana kau su- Eh Okay Okay so when I When I go solo this And I play it I'm going to get Undefined I'm going to get feedback From somebody I think I'm getting feedback Okay Okay, so when I can sort of log this, I'm getting undefined. Um, so what this means is that the value has not been assigned. The, I, I declare the variable, right? And I've not assigned to anything. So it's automatically assigned. You said? Yes, yeah, some moon, thank you. So when I can sort of log um, this value, I get undefined, right? So a single let statement may define multiple bindings. So you can do something like this. Let one is equals to one and let two equals to two. So, yeah. So a single let can actually be used to declare more than one statement. Something like this, with the comma, right? So yeah, you can also put the comma and do let three. It's equals to three. So you can do one plus two equals to three. The word var and const can also be used to create bindings in a similar way to list. So var name is equal to this. So yeah, var can be used, but um var is not the best way to do. So the first var short of variable is the way bindings were declared in pre-2015. Since this is pre twenty fifteen, that is twenty fourteen and be and be, be, be below. So um so I'll get back to the precise way it differs from let in the next chapter. For now, remember that it mostly does not it does it mostly does the same thing, but we we'll rather use it in this book because it has more confusing properties. So um so I, I don't know what guys saying, but I feel like um you guys should stop using Va, I see. I've seen. I've seen, I see people code up to now, and I see use Va. Sure, there's there's actually a very big reason why you stop using Va. But, but let's not talk about that now. The word const stands for constant. It de defines a, a constant binding, which points at the same value for as long as it lives. This is useful when binding, when bindings for bindings that give a name to a value, so that you can easily refer to it later. So binding names. So this is just talking about um, the rules of you know. So there are some variables. There's some list of words that you should not use when you're declaring a variable, like break, case, catch, class, const, continue, debugger. So all these words are reserved keywords in JavaScript. You should not. Use them. So don't worry about memorizing this list when creating a binding. When creating a binding, um, when creating a binding produces an unexpected syntax error. See whether you're trying to define a reserved keyword. So the environment. So this this topic is stuck. We are now going into things like um okay the cl the collection of bindings and their values that exist at a given time is called the environment. So the collection of bindings, I mean, the collection of all these bindings and the values that they add and their values that exist at a given time. That's all this this whole stuff is called environment. I don't know if that makes any sense. Is that, is, this is called the environment. Um, or let's call it scope. Environment or scope. Does that make sense? You know what used for it? Okay, so um what that means is um no no I think when we go deeper, right, you to make more sense. When a program starts up, this environment is not empty. It always contains bindings that are part of the language standard. Which is called um, the global scope. When you start the code, right, without, a, without without even anything, right, there is a global scope already, and there is a window object already. Like there's already things that are defined by the, by the browser itself, right. So you can do something like um, um, window dot console. You know, I think um, we have come. Let's see, um, something like this console or log or device. So all, all these are attached to 
the window object or the global scope. So uh, when the program starts up like from scratch, the environment is not empty. Like this, don't be fooled by this empty. There's there are a lot of stuff here, but you cannot see them. So that's what it's saying. Um, it always contains bindings as part of the language standard, and most of most of the time, it has, has it has bindings that provide ways to interact with the surrounding system. For example, in a browser, there are functions that there are functions that there are functions to interact with the currently loaded website, and read mouse and keyboard input. So this is already that um, in a browser, right? Without anything, there are already functions to interact with the currently loaded website and to read mouse and keyboard input. So this is just exactly telling you that this is the window, right? So when you want, there are functions that interact with the keyboard and mouse, it's the functions that are embedded in the window object. Uh, does it make sense now? Or is it, is it, okay. So functions now, so let's move into functions. Now we're getting to the sweet stuff. A lot of values provided, a lot, a lot of values provided in a default environment have the type function. A function is a piece of program wrapped with a value. Okay, so uh, before I before I go, let let me ask. Who can tell me what what is the function? What do you understand by function? Let me just let me just get people's opinions. What do you think a function is? What do you, what, what, what do you understand by functions? Let me let me ask before I go. Yeah, please. No, you know, you know, no, no, just no, no, <laughs> no, not. You. Okay. Okay, just like I can go. Okay. Someone else go. Yeah. I didn't get you. Okay. Okay. All right, Prince, let's go. Prince. Okay. 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 Okay, Joyce, now you want to go. Okay. Go brand. Go brand you. Go brand. Okay. 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 No problem. Thank you guys. So yes, a function a, a function is basically a reusable block of code. That's how that's how I call it. A reusable block of code. So yeah. That's the the primary the primary um function of a function. I don't say something. The primary function of a function is to make it reusable. So so if you have a function now that let's say function, let's say add. And it takes in two numbers a and b and then um then you see like a return a plus b so whenever i call this function i'm passing two numbers what's it going to do i'm going to add them right yeah so it's just going to if I have this this function and I take it to maybe from from here, I take it somewhere else on the code, and I do this and I did change numbers, let's say four, I do it like six. I can easily just reuse this without creating the whole this whole stuff myself again from scratch. So that's what the function is. It's a block of code that's reusable, very very usable. That's the whole point of functions. 
the function a lot of function a lot of values provided in default environment have that type have the, have the type functions a function is a piece of program wrapped in, in a value such values can be applied in order to run the wrapped program for example in a browser environment the binding prompt holds a function that sh that shows a little dialog box asking the user input asking for the user input this is used like this so prompt enter your passcode so everybody knows what prompt is now right do i need to demo it everybody knows what this is right okay some people don't if you don't know just tell me so i can demo it for you you don't know what the prompt is you don't know Okay, so now let's let's let me show you guys what the prompt is. Now let's see. I go to a, a brand new page and I go to my console, right? And I typed I, I typed this prompt. Sorry, a prompt. I see um. Enter the password. Enter. I get a prompt here that says another password. I can see um one, two, three, four, five. I can see okay. So that's basically the prompt. Now I get that my prompt my password is one two zero five. So that's it. It's also a lot. Eloquent JavaScript. Eloquent JavaScript, right? So this is the alert. The other one is the prompt. So I can see um prompt enter your password, and I can also do um prompt. I see um enter your username. So enter your password. One two three. Okay. Enter exam name. So, do you understand what prompt is now? Do you get what prompt is now? Okay. Alright. So, this is what it is. Enter your passcode, enter exam name. Alright. Executing a function is called invoking, calling it, or applying it. You can call a function by pass by putting parentheses after an expression. This produces a function value. Usually, you directly use the name of the binding that holds the function. The value between the parentheses are given to the program inside the function. In example, the the prompt function uses the string that we give it as the text to show in the dialog box. Um, values given to functions are called arguments. Different functions might need different numbers or different types of arguments. The prompt function isn't used much in modern web programming, mostly because we have no control over the way the resulting dialog looks, but can be helpful in toy programs and experiments. So what this is talking about now is... So, please don't have a question. Question? Prince. Okay. So, example of a function now is this. So, um, okay, let me ask a question. Who can help me out? I want to write a function that um, subtracts two numbers. Who can help me out? You can just speak up. I can hear you. Function subtract. Okay. 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 Here, it might not be here. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. How do I use the function? How do I like use it? Like pass numbers to it and maybe use it. Okay. I should just move this. Okay, what should I should I see you like this? With what? Okay. Okay. So so now I want to so I want to call this function now subtract. Um so how do I pass in numbers into the subtract function? Okay, five, comma, two. Okay, thank you. So um, I can store this result in a variable. Let's x cos of x. If I console log um, x, we to get um. We play this. I get three, right? So what this is saying is that um, functions can take in parameters. And these parameters, see if if over if I move over this a, I get the parameter, and then it's telling me that a parameter a, and then the data type is any. And it means that any 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 value can be there. So I, instead of passing in a number, I can actually pass in. I can pass in an array. One, three, four, five. But then <laughs> doing this, I have to just do this. So yeah, I think I, I cross my I think this might actually work. Yeah, works. So let me do this. To... I'm not. I don't want to confuse you guys. I promise you guys. <laughs> let's just try to. But well, anybody get what those did here? Why this is working? Nope. <laughs> yeah. No. Any function must not be returned. It's like saying um everybody that goes out must come back home. Or everybody that is born must make it in life. Is it is it is it a must? I'm just using an analogy to paint a picture. You must not return actually. You must not if you go if you go out, the tendency that you might actually die is there. So you might actually kidnap you. Boko Haram SAS. <laughs> the probability is not is this god forbid child, but the probability is there so yes a function that does not return anything is still a function right but it can be doing other things like uh let's see let me see how something like this now i have a function it doesn't take anything um i have um let let x is equals to zero function that um x plus plus i increase x by one so this function is returning anything no when i call this function it's doing something what's it returning okay thank you when i call this function uh I'm going to do console log. I'm going to do control key. I'm going to go subtract. Whenever I call, I call subtract. If I console log, uh, my x, you notice that the value of my x is now one, right? So everything that I increase the value, anytime I call this, the value of x is going to be increased by one. So this function does not return anything but it is a function so exactly what we are showing us now was this console.log is it doing anything do you think console.log return anything actually i don't know 
So I don't expect, I don't, I don't expect anybody to even tell me an answer because we, we, can't, we can't see the constant law. We don't know whether there's a return statement signed there. So I'm assuming that there is none. But the point is, every function tells something. A function that does there to do other things. Then? Love. L-O-V. Okay, log. <laughs> log, okay. Yes, yes, log is a function. This is a function. This is a, this is a function. Yes, so, but that's what I'm saying. That we don't really know what's going on inside the log, inside the console of log. We don't really know what's, what goes on there. So, I can't really tell you that it's, that it's returned anything or not. That's one thing I, can, I cannot, I cannot see. Because I can't see it. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You use, you use the word return when you're expecting something. If I give you money now and that's, I, okay, I, there are two friends, right? One of them say, okay, take take this money, take ten thousand naira, go. Um, the other friend, let's say you are the other friend, are you going to return it? I give you money. I say take take this money. You just take the money. You you don't. I didn't. I did not say you should return it. There was no point where I said return my money back. So you probably take the money and just go with it. Like thank you. You just go. But if I say, bro, take this money. Please return it back to me. I need this money. You are now you are obliged to return the money. Right? Same thing with the function. When you tell the function to return something, it is going to return something for you. But when you say function, just go. It's gonna just gonna run. And then it's going to well actually it's going to return something. But we're going to return undefined. So when I console log this subtract, just get just see what's gonna happen now. Console log subtract, see what's gonna happen. I'm going to get there's, there's going to be a default return, but the return is undefined. Can you see? So the return is not defined. It means that it's exactly the same thing as saying let x, right? And I didn't declare a variable. If I console log x, what would I get? Yeah. Undefined. It's not, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. It's what I'm talking is undefined. It means that is the, what this guy is saying that, bro, you don't specify anything for me. But I'm telling you that what I contain currently now is undefined. Exactly the same thing with the function. You don't say it should return anything. So you can tell you that I am undefined. So not returning a, a, a function, it's not, return, not, not having the return keyword in the function is synonymous or anonymous i don't know what english to use to having a value of x and not putting a value to it so this x let x equals is exactly the same thing as having this a function that doesn't have return they are exactly synonymous am i clear This is a function without a parameter now. There's a parameter here. So it works. So there's no most pass parameter. Functions run without, without parameters. Any other question? Okay. Nice, nice. So please, if you have questions and you don't ask, right? Oh, just sorry, I want to ask. If you have questions and you don't ask, you just you just be there with your questions and so see, ask me any question, right? Except from relationship issues, sir. Yeah. But any other question that I that I can answer that just ask you related, ask me. I'll be, I'll help you to ask. <laughs> well, if you have issues with your whatever, don't bring it here. But if you have any JavaScript issues that related to functions. If you try the function before so, 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 the, you know, just ask me, I will help out. This is an opportunity to ask any question. Okay. So the console log function. In in the examples, I use console log to output values, right? Most JavaScript systems, including all modern web browsers and Node.js, provide a console log function that writes out its argument to some text outside so some text output device. In browsers, the outputs land in JavaScript console. 
in this part of the browser interface it's hidden by default but most browsers open it when you press the f12 so that means this what this guy is talking about is that this is the console yeah this one every browser has a console by default yeah so sorry this is this is not it mm, where is it again you know bp source is uh what i guess this console again said Ugh. i don't type it so you can go you can, can go from here settings uh the settings right okay more tools developer tools and then you get your console so the browser has different function the, like the browser is actually one of the biggest engines ever so it does a lot of stuff there's the elements there's the console there's the sources tab so this source tab is kind of like a a, a javascript runtime a place where you can write your your code and do stuff the network tab talks about network requests and the rest there are other stuff you can actually work with too but it depends on what you what you want to achieve so yeah but the console is what we're talking about now the console is basically your javascript engine this is where you you get to see things if i do um four plus three plus four i get seven Chance on. so this is the console so i don't even need to do console.log console.log but i can do it if i want console.log right uh i can see four plus it i get 12 but i can also do four plus it starting to get 12. the reason why i got this is the console so imagine telling the console to log like it's like saying also a lot on the console when i'm already on the console i don't know if you get how i don't know who to get why it's so basically this is the console share so i can do anything there um okay so um though binding names cannot contain period characters console.log does have one this is because console.log isn't a simple binding it's actually an expression that retrieves the log property from the value held by the console binding we'll find out exactly what this means in chapter 4 so now we're talking about return values now so in a dialog box or writing or writing text to the screen is a side effect so who can tell me what the side effect is what, what do you what do you understand by side effect anybody what's the side effect uh i'm sure most of you guys are you know you guys have done react before you thought about something about use effect or maybe um in pure functions you've heard all these things before let me ask what's what's it what's the side effect anybody answer anybody just give a suggestion anything you think Okay, so let me let me since I don't think anybody has. Uh, okay, so uh, let me ask Obuzo, what do you think? What's the side effect? Yeah. Yes, in this No, JavaScript meaning. Extra cost. Mm. <laughs> okay. Anybody wants to? Yeah. I do. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Thank you. So yes, let me let me let me articulate this point. A side effect is basically when a function is affecting a code outside its scope. So that means this function now is basically manipulating something outside it. Right? So that makes it a side effect. So um is an external is an external code, right? And then I have um I'll have my function here that is manipulating it. So um that's what side effect is. Exactly. Uh okay, so basically a side effect is any function. Any function that affects that or manipulates code outside the scope. So that means if I have if I want to if I want to make this function not be um so if I want to make this function a pure function, okay. So what this is saying is like there are two types of functions there's pure and an impure function. So this is a this is an impure function, right? Because I'm manipulating code outside it. But let me show you an example of a pure function. An example of a pure function is this. Let's say we have this. And then let's say we have something like this. Um a and b right so when i do return a plus b so at this point now this function is not going to affect any code outside it like there's no variable or anything that is being affected by this code so whenever i put the same input i'll get exactly the same output right so this is a pure function an example of an impure function too it can be something like let's say um i have um let's no we've not discussed array before it's equals to say zero one two one three let's just have a function let me copy this Call it um, pops. Then I'm going to take in nothing, and it's not going to do anything. It's going to do um, arr dot pop. So look at the this function is doing. Pops. What does it do? Look at between what arr or pop or what um for pops is doing. Function pops, what's it doing? Hello. An array? See, is it any array? Is it does it mean the back does it remove element from the back of any array? No, that's not true. Does anybody else want to try? What was what was the um function pop is doing? Yeah. Inside which are inside which are okay. Let, let me rename it. Um, because I'm, 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 I, I want some somebody to like you know to specifically do something. Alright. I'm not doing anything, yes, I know. Yeah, I don't have to return anything. I'm not doing anything. Wow.
Okay. Ayun natin siya. Nobody has anything to say about this function. What does this function do? And, uh, and yeah, what does function do? What does function pops do? Exactly. Thank you. So you move that segment from the new array. So um, whenever I call this function pops, right? I consider log new array. Played. It is that okay. X is not defined. Okay, so let me move this guy. And play. This is that the element has returned just two elements, which is zero and one. The value, the value three has been removed. Right. Let me play it again. It's most likely the same thing. Yeah, the value three has been removed. So it's remove the first last element from the array. It's just gonna remove the only ones because every single time you call it. Yeah. So um yes, so what this means is this function. You you were not I don't even I, I can't I, I was not I was able to get what you're doing. You never articulate your points, right? Okay. So yes, that's what this does. So this function is is it pure or impure? Is this function pure or impure? The pure function. <laughs> oh more. How is it a pure function? What makes it pure? Huh? Eh? I don't want to this. Hey, my heart don't break. You have to turn to 10 pieces. Why is this your function, Joyce? Come on now. Pops, pops. It's pure now. It's a pure function. It cannot be a pure function. Why, okay, why is it Why is it impure? Exactly. That I've been explaining for like the last five minutes now. A pure function is a function that does not mutate anything outside its scope. But an impure function is going to mutate things outside its scope. So this array is going to be mutated by this function pops. That makes it impure. That means you cannot predict what this function is going to return. Right? You don't know. Let's say you have this function now. You call it somewhere. And then um, there's an array that you're working with to do something else. This function might basically be removing element from the back. And you don't know. You might easily don't you don't you might never know where it's coming from. The bug might just come from somewhere that okay, there's, there's an array that is maybe instead of you having like four items, you have three items in the array. But you don't know where the function is, you don't know where the last element is going to. Cause something like this can cause it. Impure functions. So yeah. Uh, so, so basically, an impure function does what we call side effect. Mutating elements outside your scope is a side effect. Showing a dialog box or writing text to the screen is a side effect too. Right? A lot of functions are useful because of the side effects they produce. Functions may also produce values, in which in which case they don't need to have a side effect to be useful for example the amount of max takes in an amount of number and gives back the greatest so this one is a pure function because it is not mutating anything outside the scope right it's just returning the value that you passed in it return the highest one so it's not going to mutate any element or any area outside it in in pure functions are not totally useless right like console log now is is console or logging something to your console 
right it's very useful what is the game dialog boxes are also important too using your site your use effects in react js is also very important getting data from an api from another another api endpoints you know getting data you know do you know what these are all impure functions but they are useful so if this array if there was a way maybe we needed this thing to work like this before a particular piece of code we're writing or a software we're writing even if this is impure it's still useful right it does what it wants to do it does what it's supposed to do so having an impure function is not a bad thing you get having a pure function too is not necessarily the best thing Do you understand? It's like saying, um, I can't hear you. And, okay, so the the advantage of, of using a pure function is you know that whatever you are passing in is the output is predictable. It's like saying, if I give you five Nera, I'm going to get five Nera back. Do you understand? Do you understand? So there is no, there is nothing outside me that is going to change. I'm not going to give five million and expect uh, one million. Uh, I'm not doing, I'm not doing MMM. Do you understand? So that one is not going to, is not going to change the output of the code in any unpredictable way. So your code is predictable, and you can easily test your code. And you, when you test it, you're going to get the same output, right? um an impure function right can also be useful for things like just like we are you are here now things like this now writing to the screen or dialog boxes these are side effects having okay let me show you now i have i go to my dialog box and i do something i do a lot I do a lot. Um, welcome. And this alert from God knows where. I don't know where it's coming from, but it runs a piece of code that is going to do this on my screen. This is the side effect. It is affecting code outside its scope. Whatever this is doing is not is not inside this alert. Like the alert is. It's probably playing with some other elements in the code that's going to pop out this thing. Do you understand? Is this clear? Are you guys getting me? Uh, hello? Uh... Buzu, Buzu, I think you you share your screen. I, I don't know what you're trying to do. Can you stop sharing your screen? Uh, just stop sharing your screen, okay? Uh, I don't want to move from the call. Uh, I don't know. I think maybe it's just. Oh, uh, bro, what did you do? You messed this shit up. Okay. This this guy also sharing his screen too. What's going on here? Are, are you guys are you guys really serious? What's going on? It's fine. So functions, <laughs> functions produce functions also. Oh, it's my mistake. Oh, Ed, okay, no problem. Please, everybody that's sharing should stop sharing, please. Thank you. Yeah, it has stopped. Yeah. Yeah, we, Buzo, please meet. Thank you. So yes, um, this is an impure function um so i want to ask now is there a way to turn this impure function to pure function 
kasih. Okay. Let me stop sharing. I see it now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm asking now, this function pops, is there a way to to turn it to a, a like in a a um a peer function? Once done this function pops. Eh? Uh my brother, what's going on now? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Should I wait? I don't understand what's going on today, Sha. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so um, I was asking, can you guys see my screen now? Buzo, please don't share your screen again, Abeg. Thank you. Okay, so is there a way to turn this function pops to a peer function? Can I help you out? Any idea? How how do I do it? Why I turn function pops to a peer function? Okay, what are passing? Okay. Here, here. Are. Okay. Can I turn here? Um, I don't think this is what I wanted. Ah. I want to turn pops from an impure function to a pure function. Yes. Not see my screen. I hope this guy not sharing again. Oh, see, who's this guy now? This is actually getting very irritating now. At this point, what's this now? Who's sharing the screen? I'm coming. Let me let me change the setting of this call. Was you know. Wait. What was it? Okay. All right. Continue. It's my screen now. All right. Let's go. So who will say something? Do you, do you guys get the, the whole idea of pure and impure? I don't explain now. You have to go back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh -huh. Okay, let me let me do something for you. Let me show you that. Okay, so let's pass in your array, maybe. And then we um, also pass in your array. Let's let's see, let's call it array. Here, see the same thing, right? And do array dot pop. Okay. 
Um, no, I want to, I want to show that this this two this will see affect the new array. Let me add a five here. Let me play. So I should I should pass around that array entirely. That's what I'm doing now. This is what I did. I should just no, no. I, I don't want to. I, I, yeah. I want to change an impure function to a pure function. Is it clear now? Turn an impure function to a pure function. That's what I want to do. So if I don't want to give me the code. Using the index. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I, I don't I I still don't think you will understand what I'm asking. I want to I, I want this function hmm, to not mutate this array. Do you understand? The function should be there, the array should be there, but the function whenever it runs, it should not change this value from 0, 1, 3, 5 to anything. The value remains the value. Whatever happens, the value does not change. New array will not change. Exactly. Okay. Okay, how do we do that? That's, that's, that's actually the answer. Like, funny enough, that's actually the answer. You want to mutate, you want to create a pure function. You actually don't need to work with the original array. So what you can do is you can also let an array is equals to spread array. Spread array means you want a copy of the array or you don't want to deal with the array. So now if I do an array dot pop I am not going to mutate new array. If I turn, if I turn, um, let me return um, an array. So you notice that when I return an array, let me comment this one out. This, uh, let me play it. Okay, let me consider log this. I don't, think, I don't think you guys see get me, shall I have feel, feeling like people don't get me, friend. But it's fine. So now I have an array, and this is what I'm getting, right? But then when I when I when I console my original array, this is what I'm getting. It's still the same thing. Can you see? Am I making sense? Please, if you don't understand me, I beg. This is chapter two of this book. If you don't understand me by this point, it's not in chapter six that you will understand though. So it's the best time to start asking questions is now. When we get to chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, the book is not going to be easier. Hold me harder. So please, if you don't understand me, now is the best time to ask questions. Because it's not when you start moving to, you know, um, uh, you know, out of all these crazy parts that you get. It's not that it's chapter two now that things are still simple. I'm talking about the uh, environment, binding names. This is now when this is the best time to understand this book. Start following us from now. If you don't understand now, ask questions. Don't wait till we get to the part where it looks like we're doing a regex or we're doing a Chinese. Ask a question now. So 
everybody gets what, what I just explained now. Abby? Please, if you don't understand, ask me, I will explain. Are we good? Okay. Okay. I'm assuming that <laughs> others that are not saying anything. I'm assuming that we are good because if you are not good, talk cool. Because the higher we go, the more complex this boost gets. It's not now that we will... mm -hmm. okay. With chapter two, you know. What what are you not getting? What's 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 not clear? What's not clear? So, okay, let me ask you a question. What is the whole idea of a pure function? What do you think? What, what, what do you understand by the idea of a pure function? Like, what's your idea of a pure function? Let me ask you. Let's start from there. <coughs> hmm? Are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? We have left. Okay. Any other person that doesn't understand? Okay. I, I asked a question. What what do you what do you what do you understand by the idea of a peer function? Okay, so but the one I explained now is not is not is not make sense, okay? You not get it. Okay. Okay, so let me let me let me let me go over it again. A pure function ideally is a function without side effects. Side effects are just like the main name says, side effect. It means that effect. So when something is side effect, it means that it is doing something by the side. It's affecting something outside. Side effect. So, um, let's see. Um, okay, let me give you an exam example of side effect in real life. Now, let's say uh, you, 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 you went to buy bread in the market, and then let's see. Um, after buying the bread. What can I use that code? Can you ever give me an analogy that can use to explain the side effect? Okay. Um, what can I use now to explain side effects? Uh? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so you exactly you buy drug now, it's malaria drug now, you're drinking malaria drug. It is now it's not giving you eye problem. Or stomach pain, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, this malaria drug is not meant to just cure malaria. What is it now doing to my eye or my ear or my nose? That's what a, a, a pure function is a function that does not have side effects, it does not touch any other variable anywhere else on the function. So you can see them, you can see this function, it even passes it as a parameter, but in this function, please, it does not affect. Whatever it does, it does not touch this. It does not change the value here. There is no changing of this array. This array is still the same thing. So what we did here was we wanted to pop value from the array, but we do not want to. We do not want to. Okay, okay, okay. Let me do something now. Um, does anybody here know higher order functions? You can tell me like two header functions that you know. Map. Reduce. Okay, so let's say map. Um okay. so uh okay map 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 can I use okay let's use map 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 okay so um uh, map 
once we call this function map okay so i want to I want to pass this array but i want to return i want to use map to generate a new array but the array most like every element in this array is going to be like twice so let's see one two three five i want to i want to get a new array and the array i want to return is like every element in this array times two you can help me out yes i want to see what i should return Okay, let me call the item. Twice, like, yeah, yeah. Yes. Times two. Yes. Yes, times two. Times two. So, is this a pure or an impure function? No. Let me ask. Impure, impure, impure. Are you sure it's impure? Is it pure function? This is a pure function now, guys. Huh? This is a very pure one. It's so it's pure like it's pure like pure water. <laughs> It feel like a like a pure bliss. <laughs> it's pure because this array is not being mutated. Even if we are using this array, when I when I console a log map, right, I'm going to get a totally different function. Let's say map. I pass pass an array, new array, right. And I play it. This is a totally different function. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It's not the same thing with this. Even if we are using this array, this one as our iterators, we are getting a totally different array, right? But when I consider log, new array, new array is exactly the same way it was before. Nothing change. I did not I did not override this value. I'm generating a new array. Is this clear? Okay, um yes, um map is just an example. I I okay, you understand map? Who says you understand map? Ah, who's the why now? You don't do the, the, the community for why now? I don't have a map. <laughs> why? What's going on? Okay, map mm -hmm. is a higher order function that takes in an array, right? And then it generates a new array. So, wh wh what this is doing now, this is returning a totally different array. Exactly. Like a totally different array. So it's the same thing as doing something like this. Um uh you can do something like this. Let new ERR is equals to this for let x of new array. Um new array push x times two exactly the same thing right right on anyway. so what this code is saying is that i'm using my sorry let me use this is a mistake 
my 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 equator is ARR, which is this array here. But I'm getting a new array. So this is returning a new array. Is this clear? So that's what map this is what map is doing. Taking every instance of the of the element and generating a new value from it and pushing it to a new array. So now this function is pure. No matter what happens in this function, this new array here is not affected. It's still the same thing. Okay, so now okay, let, let me let me ask how do I make this function impure? I want to make it impure. I want to make it impure, like I want to return this array, but the array will be muted. It will change, value will change. How do I do it? Good idea. Eh? Yes, can you look down? Okay, you said? Okay. No, you can't put return here now. This is this is just stop the loop. So it will be new array. Square bracket. So now we don't have an iterator. Right. Two less is zero. One. Two. Right. So that's what we want. We want to do this. So what we want to do is we want to replace everything with value of this new array. A new value. So I think the best way to do it is using normal loop. Normal for loop. Are so the new array bracket i is x times two. We don't have x again, so now let's do um array square bracket i right. uh there is equals to array. Bracket i times two. This work. Does it make sense? This is because I wrote it. This is because I wrote it. That it's work, Abi. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's let's see what we get when we. What our 
Please, uh, let's play. I see new arrays now. What? What's this? Exactly. So, what does that mean? What does this mean? Exactly. It has mutated the new array. So, have I, have I been able to explain this topic very well now? Is it clear? Eh? Ah. Um, bro, I don't think you're following. I don't think you're following. If you're following, you will not be lost. It's right there. Do you do you do you, do you follow? So can you explain it? I think it's right. I think I wish to explain at this point because they say now you are confused past. So <laughs> let's wait actually. Let's see how everybody will get. I right, try. Yeah, what do you say? Yeah, I can hear you. Why what? Okay, I can I can actually see change it to ERR. It's still simple. It's a bit the same answer. See the same value. This is still going to be the same thing. Uh, let me play so you can see. See. Uh, it, it, it means that I see, inside this function, I still have access to this new array. I still have access to it. Even if what I did was was an oversight, right? Because I was, it's still the same thing, but I can actually still do it and I'll get the same answer. I was working with, you know, this array. So this is just, this is the same thing with this. So I can easily do any of them I want. Yeah. So the problem I come with maybe when is maybe like I have a function here. Uh, like here now. Who wants to explain? I try and explain.
Okay. So is that clear now? Yeah. Eh? Okay, don't worry. I'll change the name. Our name is Impure now. Okay. I mean, that would just. Uh, do, 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 do you understand what I did here? Do you get what I did? Okay, so now I've, I've, I've changed the name now. I hope you people, hope, hope it's clearer. Is, does this make sense now? Does it make a little bit of more sense? Sorry, your, your your network is not clear. Your your voice is is. I should do what? Okay, we should we should have a power function. Okay. Okay, you know what? I'm going to ask you guys. I want to create a peer function. Who's going to help me? I've already done it before. Well, I'm, I'm not going to cast. I'm just going to change the name. Okay, what don't you ask? Hmm? A, a, if a four of loop does not have access to the iterator, I, right? So the way to have done with the four of loop, okay. So okay, okay. If let's say you want to do the four of loop, right? Um, there's actually there's actually there's there, let's say there's no way. Okay, see, look at them. Change the problem. Hello? Yeah? Uh -huh. How? I mean an impure function. I want to generate an impure function. Just like this one, but yes, an interior function. Yes. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, give me the code, please. Oh yeah. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. What's the log? Should you rewind me, Abi? I ask, are you trying to warning me like this? You want to warn me, Shah? God, I beg. <laughs> Is it? A for each. You can't do for each now.
Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know what? You know what? You know what? Oh yeah, give me the code for the four. Give me the code for the four. I don't want everybody to tell me it's work. It's not work. Tweet for me. Yes, in your function. Yes. <laughs> Bro, are you I I I are you serious? Are you literally serious right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, try, try, try. Oh yeah, try. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know something okay you, you know why this is not going to work are you? you know it's not going to work okay okay so i'm just going to comment this one out so that we can see what we have. Let me see this. This is what we get. This is what we get. So have we, have we finalized that we cannot use the fourth loop? Oh, I'm going to see good argue with <laughs> There's no way to use the fourth loop actually. To do this. The only way to use it is to Yeah. Ah, oh yeah, now. Let's go, let's go. Give me, give me. Okay, 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 okay. Where don't quit it? Okay. I don't miss this one up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got plus here. Okay, this 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 should work, but basically it's the same thing as having this. There's no point doing through all the stress when you can just have a normal for loop. Okay, but let's. Funny enough, eh? Looking at this now, eh? Ah. <laughs> wait, okay, wait, 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 I rescribe back okay, I, I rescribe back okay, I, is there one, two, okay, yes, okay, okay, Ed, that means you don't need any need for this item, ni. This item is probably just useless, which is, which is not, not a good, which is not a good sign, well, it should work. So it should work. Yeah, it works. But I don't think this is the best way to do it. Just basically your for off loop. Your normal for loop. Because now you're basically just having it like iterate outside and then you're increasing it. Okay. So now let's go to the pure one. The battery is basically going to die in the next 20, 39 minutes. Never been light for outside. If you can last that long. Sure you guys are enjoying this class today. Are you guys learning something? Are we learning something? Who baby is learning too? <laughs> Alright, let's go. Pure function. I've already did the goal before. I'm just asking you guys to re re replicate. Let's not use map. Let's not use map. I think that's a confuse. Uh, confuse them too. 
for each. Okay. I have the last time I used this for each method was when I was about to, to kill myself. I don't like using it. That's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> because there's no point. Like, but there's no point using this for each method I make. It's just less. That's something else. The reason why I say it's useless is because it does not it does not necessarily do anything. It's just a it's a loop without the benefit of a loop. Then we get on to see. It's a loop, but yeah, it's a loop. I say it's a loop, but without the benefit of a loop. So if I want to use a for each, okay, uh, uh, you know what? Let's let's use let's use a for each loop. So that I will explain to you guys what I mean by. It. Is it? Because it doesn't return anything now. It's it's quite useless. It's just there. There's no there's no point to having a for each loop because. It's basically the same thing as having a normal because if I want to use a forest, I have to still declare a new array. This new array outside here. I mean, there's a new array too. Like, what's not the point of having a loop when you basically have to basically just. It's, it's useless. And you do new array dog push. Array to dog push. I'm just going to do this and I'll show you the difference between this and a normal for loop. <laughs> and then you can tell me what is the benefit of this for each loop. I personally don't use for each loop. Like if there's any reason to not to use it then there's no there's no reason to use it actually. So this is for each loop, right? Just just got the difference between this for each loop and the normal for loop. And you tell me the tell me which one it looks which one looks which one looks better. So you guys actually tricked me to write the code myself. I was thinking that you guys be able to write this code, but yeah, uh, no, I see myself. So yeah, so now what's the I'm doing this code at uh, this code? This one, looks, this one looks easier to understand and cleaner. Eh? I literally just said it now that there is no benefit to for each loop. It's an array without the benefit of an array. I say I just I literally said it like some minutes ago. Yeah, I don't I don't use it. I don't think anybody should use it. It's not it's not useful in any sense. It's like an imposter. Neither function has not done anything. Busy as function. You said? I can't hear you. Hey, I, I, I don't even know why they created that 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 that, that for each loop. Maybe they, they have the reason for it, but personally I don't see the point. All, all through my coding experience, I've never used it for anything serious. I don't think I've ever used it for anything serious. Yes, it does. Okay, so okay, yes, yes, it does actually. That's you have to the index and you have to the array. Uh, but the point is it still does not return anything. So what's now the use of it? I can't 
it does not return anything. So I have to still basically manually create one array. So have you seen how a map works before? Have you seen a map before? So it's like saying, look at your meat, how you are doing your life. <laughs> I'm so when they are having for um, I hired. I'm so I'm so they, I'm so they do hire other functional meeting and then for each to come to like, you can never make it, you can never make it. <laughs> you should be cleaning McDonald's because what are you doing? Like, can you see? See your mates. So basically, it's it basically doesn't do anything serious. So this is basically the same thing using a map. Like this is basically using a map. And this is the same thing using a for each. So you can see the difference and tell me how useful a for each look is. Number one, it does not return anything. Yeah, and even writing itself is painful. You have to start using capital letter for a function that does not return anything. It's stressful. Okay, and then we we'll do. even use push in any other function it's sad man sad sad life and then we still have to see explicitly return It's basically the same thing as having a normal for loop, but just that it's the higher order function. Yeah. So this is a map. This is a for each, and this is a for loop. <laughs> so yeah, you guys be the judge of the case. So yes, um, I think we've built on this point for quite a while now. Uh, uh okay. Uh, so we talked about amount of max being a pure function. So um, when a function produces a value, it is set to return a value. Anything that produces a value in an expression in JavaScript, um. Which means the function calls can be used within a JavaScript. Here is a call to mat.mean, which is the opposite of random mass. It is used as part of the process expression. Okay. I think what this guy wants, what this point we see them. Mat.max is a pure function. Right? So we'll discuss that. So now this mat.mean is returning a value. Right? And then the value is returning. When we add it to 100, we're going to get 102. So this mat.mean is returning the value. I think that's what this guy is going to be. Everything here is going to return one single value, which is 4. Mat.mean is going to return one value, which is 2. And then that value can be used to, you know, to add other values. Or it can, it can be used as an as. It can be used as, an, as a, uh, what do I put it now? As a, as a variable to, to add like to do other things exactly is this clear eh? yeah so what this is trying to say is um this function 
Moi, je dois Ou tant de ce. Let's say we have a function. Okay. Okay. So let's have a function, and then function is um function sum, and function takes into parameters a and b. Returns a plus b. Right. And then um, can we consider log? So log sum passing three and five. It should give me it, right? It should give me it, yes, right. So now I can say this sum three plus five. I take it as, as a value, I can do plus 100. When I console log so that what am I going to get? Exactly. Why am I getting one of it? This is concatenating. Concatenating what now, bros? <laughs> Ah, I don't know. Let's go, guys. Eh? I'm doing what? Yes, so this is returning the value. The value is returning is 8. And then I'm adding another value to it. So if I do this plus some. Two and four. What am I going to get? Fourteen. Okay. Let's see. Fourteen. Right. So this is producing a value. Eight. This producing another value. Right. Exactly the same thing as doing console log it plus six, right? They are the same thing, Abby. Yes, that's the same thing. It's also the same thing as doing something like this. Let's uh, um, F1 is equals to it. Let's because two six and then I do uh, F one plus F two right same thing Abby Is this, is this clear? So, whenever I return from a function, the return value is the result of the function. So, a plus b is going to be whatever this is, 3 plus 5 is 8. So, this is serving as a variable. So, return whatever this is returning, which is 8 plus this. Which give us 14. Am I able to make? Is, is, I hope this is clear, sure. Make sense? Okay. So that's what this guy is saying here. He said, when a function produces a value, it's said to return that value. Anything that produces a value is an expression in JavaScript, which means functions calls can be made, can be used within larger expressions. Here is a call to math.mean which is the opposite of mother math. It's used as part of a plus expression. Okay. Yeah, all right, take care. So now let's talk about control flow. I think this, uh, um, we're not even done. No. This this chapter, chapter two is to take control flow. 
Ah, one more. Talk about loops. I think we should end it here today. What do you guys think? Uh, <laughs> this one has more now. I just want to blow your head. You see no man. I'm just looking at I'm looking at I'm looking at time man, because Okay. And now let's let's talk about control. Okay. It's a whole topic. Control flow is a whole topic on this one. <laughs> Don't worry. Control flow is a whole topic on this one. I right, thank you guys for attending today's book review. Hope you learned a lot. Hope I was able to confuse you and not to convince you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do what? Okay, uh, it's a. Uh, I think I got it from an extension. I can't remember the name. I don't know if anybody knows it. I don't know. I've got the name, I just know I have it. No, it's not everybody that has it. No way. I installed it. Uh. Yeah, okay. You didn't install it. <laughs> I don't even know what I did. I shall I shall install an extension. An extension does that for me. I don't know the name I would I I can't I, I didn't know to go search online. So. I don't know what to, okay, his name is Code Runner. Yeah. Let me show you, I think I, think I found it. Code Runner is his name. Let me share my screen so I can show you. Thanks, my screen. Let me stop sharing. And also, I'll just stop this recording. <laughs>